Hello, this is Sean Mullery from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo. And in the last lecture and the exercise that I gave you, we, we discovered that two of the port pins on port B were in fact set up as analog outputs. And what I asked you to do was to look up the document on the 16F88 PIC and try and determine how we would set up all of port B to use digital input output. Okay, so that was your, your task. Now, we since discovered that part of the problem here was actually with the version of the simulator. Version 1.9 causes this, this issue to occur, whereas version 2.0, if you have that, this uh, issue does not occur. But one way or the other, you should be able to look up the document and find out how exactly we set things up as either digital I.O. or analog I.O. Uh, and any problems with the simulator, we will then worry about that at a later date. So let's have a look at the document. Um, for the 16F88. And again, as I said to you previously, don't uh, don't go reading this uh, document from uh, you know cover to cover because there's way too much in it uh, for you to try and read and take in. Instead, you need to be very get very good at quickly searching for things. So we want to set things up as digital I/O, so we can try several different um, words and so on to try and uh, track down where that might be. Uh, depending on the version of uh, Adobe Acrobat you're using, you may find it useful to put these in quotes. Um, so to put quotes around these. Now, I haven't found that particularly useful on this version on my machine, but on other versions I've found that I have to use it in order to find it. So what I've written is digital I.O. And sometimes digital I.O. is written with the slash in between the I and the O, and sometimes it's written just as I.O. So you may have to try a few of these different things in order to find the solution. Normally, the word digital on its own would not be enough for you to track down the uh, what you're looking for. So we'll do a search here, and we can see that the first thing that we come across actually gives us a good idea of the answer. Okay, <clears throat> so it says, the A to D module has a new register um, for the PIC16 device. Uh, it's named ANSEL, and that obviously stands for Analog Select. This register allows easier configuration of the analog or digital I.O. pins. So straight away there, we know that the ANSEL register must have something to do with setting up the digital I.O. Okay, now, what we should do then is we should go and have a search for uh, ANSEL. Now clearly there'll be one, it'll, it'll find the same spot there, but it may find some others for us as well. Okay, so it's found that one. Let's have a look at the next one. Now, the next place it shows us is actually on a thing called the memory map. I'll explain more about memory maps in a future lesson, but for the moment, what I want you to do is I just want you to take note uh, on your notepad um, what number is beside this? So you'll see that ANSEL is set to, or is, is beside the hex number 9B hex. Okay, so just note that down. Uh, it'll be worthwhile later on in this, uh, in this lesson because uh, you're going to see that number pop up again. We'll keep going though for another minute to find out how, what we should do with ANSEL. And we can see here, again, we see that number 9B hex appearing there. And we see that it has one unimplemented bit to it, but the rest of the bits are called ANS6 down to ANS0. Again, nothing here though to tell us uh, exactly what we should do with it just yet. So we'll try the next place. And there it appears again. Keep going. Um, again, we see a little bit of it here in a bit of text on initializing a port. So again, this can be quite useful, but this is written in assembly and we want to obviously write it in C. So it depends how much of this information is actually useful to us. Uh, we can see there that um, it's doing a bank select of ANSEL. It's then moving in the number 00, zero and then presumably moving that number into ANSEL and that's setting it up as digital inputs. So there we see um, some suggestion about how it might be used, that uh, all zeros might set it up as digital inputs. So if we find nothing else, that's certainly useful. Okay, more of the same. Ah, now this looks far more useful here. So we see the analog select register, and we see that this is the register that's shown here. It's shown us all of the bits, it's shown us that bit seven is unimplemented. Bit six controls ANS six down to zero, which selects the different analog inputs. And the analog inputs are known as analog six down to analog zero. And we see that 
if we set the numbers to one that will set that input to analog if we set it to zero that will set it to use digital io so there is in fact the answer to what we want to find if we can set the ancel register to all zeros so if we set all of these to zeros that will certainly set the two that we are dealing with to zero and it'll set all the rest of them to zero as well it should set them all up as digital io that's the plan so with that in mind let's have a quick look back at our mp lab <coughs> and we see that the two that are involved are in fact ans or say an5 and an6 um, but we want to set them all to it so what we need to do is we need to find how we're going to set that register ansel to all zeros in order to turn it into um, turn them into digital inputs now to do this we should really look at the header file for the pick that we're using now i've put that header file in moodle for you so you can have a look at it there download it save it on your h drive and what you should do is drag and drop it into mplab x because if you double click on it you may find that it opens in dev c and sometimes it can cause dev c to crash because dev c is trying to find out all the other links that are in it better if you can just drag and drop it into mplab or do a file and open and open it from there just to show you where that uh, header file can be found so that you can find other ones in the future uh, and this all depends on how things are installed on your particular machine you may find that if you're using it in the college that you may not have access to the c drive but if it's installed at home you should be able to find it <coughs> and what we find is that it's uh, on the c drive in program files usually that's written as program files x86 if you're on a, a newer machine you then go to microchip you go to xc8 you go to version uh, the version of the XCA compiler that you're using and you go to the include files so that's the full address of it there um, we'll just go back C program files microchip the XC8 compiler version 1.21 in my case uh, and then the include directory and in there are all these header files for every different type of chip you could possibly be dealing with okay for the moment we're dealing with the 16f88 so the header file is here we're going to take a quick look at that now and again what we're going to do with this and you can see that i already have it selected but we can do a control f when we're in here type in ansel to see if we can find anything related to it and it uh, brings it up for me there okay don't worry too much about these terms external and volatile and uh, I'll, I'll be looking at that later we can see it's an unsigned character which means it's going to be eight bits in length and you should spot or you should recognize that number there 0x09b that is the number that i asked you to jot down earlier it's the location of the ansel register in memory and so what we've uh, what has happened here in this header file is that we have set the term ansel well, these have just moved away from it i've obviously moved a long way away from it okay there we are again uh, we can see that ANCEL has been set to, and it's used use the term at in this case, to set it to that particular um, address. Okay, so from now on, all we have to do is rather than use the actual address of it, we can use the term ANSEL. Now, there are a few different ways of, of writing that, and we can see here that there is a struct associated with it as well if we want to deal with any of the individual bits. Um, and again we will look at that at a later date and i'll explain to you how structs are used in c so that you can use that as well but <clears throat> all you really need to know for the moment is that that term ansel is what we will use to actually um, put a number into that register so in order to do this what i'm going to do is you can see in my main file here that we call a a function here called init app and this is uh, meant to initialize <coughs> input output and peripherals for the application so that is the appropriate place to initialize my input output okay we can see here we have the setup analog fun functionality and uh, port direction so that's where i'm going to write this in and here is how you do it you literally say a n s e l is assigned and you put the number in that you want to put into it so we're going to put in the number zero zero uh, because if you recall if we put all zeros into it uh, that will set every one of them up as digital input output so i'm going to save that there at that and i'm going to um, 
going to stop my debugging session that's going on there and I'm going to uh, re re debug so that we can have a look and see has that set up the port pins correctly. And we now see that RB6 and RB7 are now set for digital outputs. Now, as I mentioned, there is a little bit of an issue with the simulator in that uh, in certain versions of the simulator, these automatically default to digital without us having to set the Ansel register at all. There is another problem as well. As it turns out in this particular version and indeed in the later versions as well, if I try to use the Ansel register to set things up for analog, it doesn't seem to work in the simulator. The chances are that the compiler is still working fine. It's probably an issue with the simulator. We're not entirely certain yet because it's uh, they're, they're, they're updating versions as they go. That's not going to be a big issue for us for the moment because we it will be some time before we come to using the port pins as analog either input or output. So for the moment, you can just uh, what you needed to learn from today was how to search for something in the document. Uh, you then needed to see how would you find that in the header file uh, for your particular chip. And you then needed to know how to use that word from the header file in your main file or in your user file, as it happens in this case, in order to actually put a number into it. So the number that's involved there, that zero, zero, if we wanted to put some other number into it as well, um, what we could do is we could set a different number here. And as long as that matched up with what we wanted to do from the detail in the document, that would be perfectly fine. OK, so. Uh, just to end here, I'm going to show you something that I have in my main file, and I really shouldn't have it in my main file. I'm going to actually move it right now. So I'm going to move this little line that I have here, <coughs> and I'm going to put it in user. And uh, I'm just going to set it here. Okay. And what I'm saying is Trispy is equal or is assigned, I should say, 0x00. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to look up the document and find out for me, what does TRISB do? So what does that do? So I'm going to give you an assignment. It'll be in the right beside this video. I want you to determine what does that term TRISB do, okay?